Right, this is one little uh, exhibit I wanted to, to see, the Meckering Earthquake, back in October the 14th, 1968. There was a few people injured, fortunately no one lost their lives. Um, it was lucky that it sort of happened during the day, but what was there, there's 78 buildings in town and only 18 remained standing. So this is the, uh, a, a scenario of it in a, uh, looks like a dining room. So it says, please sit down and when you're ready for the house to shake, push the button. Honestly, I had to take a photo, a video of me doing that. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't have believed it. But 40 seconds is all it took to destroy the town of Meckering. See if I can get that go around by the TV there. See a little bit more there, it was yeah, 10.58 a.m., a huge earthquake. It was only seven kilometers below the ground, so you know, close to a seven on the Richter scale. It's seven kilometers below, that's why it was quite, quite sharp. And the uh, picture there really shows uh, how it affected some of the land. Another graphic one there is the uh, railway track, How, how's that? Not to mention the pipeline, there's meant to be a See if I can find a picture of the pipe. I think it's in um, Meckering itself. Back to some of the Carnarvon artifacts. Here we are. Well, there's not much in Meckering that can display a lot of this kind of stuff. So it's Carnarvon popped it up and done a good effort. So here's an interesting one that shows you a railway line that was here. It's got absolutely bent and twisted out of shape. How amazing is that? It's a fair bit of strength. And then to top it all off, don't forget, there was the water pipeline. And this is a, a wee bit left. You can see that, um, that join that I was talking about. Oh, she's completely ruptured inside. So they were saying that this one here, this section of 30 inch steel pipe was telescoped about two miles west of the town uh, by the Metherine earthquake on the 14th of October. Made it to the town of Meckering where the earthquake happened. And uh, I've got rumbles here of a different kind, as you can see from the uh, photo in the back there. We've got uh, some storm clouds. Well, also a truck using his auxiliary brakes. Oh, look at those. <laughs> I think uh, possibly going to miss it. I'm just going to hang around here for a tick, but I've just pulled up at the uh, free camp and we'll, we'll check it out a bit more. It's out of Rose Gardens. Uh, there's some toilets over here. Nice flat bit of land and things here, which is good. The camera place I'm going to visit is over there. Oh, and by the way, if you didn't see the, uh, the, the car museum, yeah, it was closed. Just my luck. Anyway, it's silly for me to be out here doing some filming while that's going on. So I'm just going to sit in the van, let it pass, and then uh, pop over to, well, there's some food over there and uh, camera shop over there. Brody, ho. I'm going walk about. One or two rumbles, but they seem to be a bit further away in the distance, so not too bad. Um, yeah, being at uh, Cunnerton and seeing that little display of the uh, the earthquake sort of prepped me for this 48-hour park, um, which is at the Rose Garden. And um, not that anybody died, but there was a few injuries but they've had this rose garden out here created so that people could pl 
plant roses to remember loved ones so it's uh, really quite a nice touching bit of vibrance and color even though I've just missed most of them they're all trimmed off there's an interesting one over here where there's a uh, a door it's it's relocated many houses were destroyed town relocated to its present site um, this depicts a scene that uh, most faced with all the shops and the majority of houses ruined anyway uh, swinging around it does that's where I'm parked up there as you say plenty of nice room there plenty of rubbish bins got to be self-sufficient with your water and um, toilets but there is toilets over there um, and a dump site over there which is great you look around Meckering and you looked long enough you might find something that looks like a camera check this out Lingo and judging by the sign looks like he's open as well let's go and check him out already I've made it into this camera center now it's huge cameras everywhere everywhere so what I'm gonna do is really look for a particular camera I had two or three cameras I'll see whether I can find them and put them back there but um, really I mean if you're not here well you're a little bit unlucky but if you're passing through and get the opportunity to uh, see all this stop and see it it is um, staggering the amount that he's got here on display. So um, yeah, once again, as I say, I'll just go around look for a couple of particular cameras maybe that I had and tell you, yeah, I've had one of these. Too scared to use it because it costs so much to bloody develop it and things all the time. Hence, this world that we've got these days is amazing. It's like delete, delete, delete. Yeah, like it. <laughs> no. So coming past the entrance heading down through all these wonderful display cases lots of um, descriptions on them and things but I'm going to as I said earlier really just look for a couple of uh, particular cameras that I had when I was young honestly they're not going to be anything staggering and uh, point them out to you if I can find them all right I think I found it. I don't know whether you can probably see it clearly. On Olympus AFL, pretty sure that was it. I remember the little pop-up flash that I had to push down on the side. Pretty sure that's down up there. That's it's one of my first cameras that I that I had myself. There we go. One in the middle there now. Oh my god, can't believe it, I found it, it was a bit tricky to find, but um, the Pentax in there, a Z10, can't pronounce it, but very, it could, it might not be exactly the same one, but it's that error right there, to, um, how's that, out of all these cameras, boom, <laughs> it's a massive display, it's awesome, and it's well worth um, taking a bit of time out of your trip to come and see this and hey if, it, if you spend too long in here you can always park down at the park <laughs> it's pretty cool so scanning along the shelf here I thought the food you might be it but no it wasn't it was this Z10 Pentax it was one of my last sort of film cameras that I had before everything went digital whoa it's a big camera shop massive Really enjoyed that, it was good. I just, just walking around, walking around, walking around, just checking out the cabinets. Um, just when you think you've seen, you know, we go around and see a bit more. He's got some um, pretty good little um, talking displays there, which um, gives you some good uh, insight in the, in the history and things. So I'm gonna have a little walk about the town. I don't really see any, any walking um, trails we could do, but We'll keep my eyes peeled and uh, see what we can find out in the way of history, eh? There you go, I found information. It's on the busy highway, but uh, down the bottom there's the big camera where I've been, and then you can see all the way up there, all those dots represent buildings that were destroyed in the, uh, in the earthquake. So I'll go for a quick little walk. I won't do the whole lot. I'll 
it's a bit warm so we'll see how far we get so we don't really have to go too far and yeah we've got the uh, a billiard saloon and an imperial hairdressing they were gone so obviously all along here was your street of all your, your main buildings you can see all the plaques resembling each one okay just made my way across the railway track basically it's not far from Mickering over to here I don't know whether the cottage was called Salisbury Cottage or this is a little uh, residence of um, Salisbury. Just got to watch where I put my feet because bloody ants are around and uh, you might see a little picture that Judel cheekily put up of me getting bitten by an ant. I don't think I swore. Anyway, <laughs> so we made it to this little place. It says Salisbury. I don't know whether it's the Salisbury Cottage or um, it's in a little settlement called Salisbury. Um, but it was uh, owned by the Snook family. It was built back in um, 1904. Anyway, um, I've had it on good authority from uh, the, the bloke down at the camera place. Very knowledgeable. Any questions about cameras or any questions about the earthquake, he's got all the facts there. Anyway, he said that uh, she had just done a load of washing and was about to put it out and put her daughter into a cot to have a nap anyway went out just doing the uh, hanging the washing out and uh, things just went crazy there 11 o'clock I think it was in the morning poof, things started shaking 40 seconds she basically came just screaming back to the house and um, yeah wow miracle sitting there in the middle of the we'll see if we can find it middle of the house was this uh, cot I don't believe it was touched and uh, it was fortunate uh, from the bloke from the uh, camera place it was fortunate that the walls fell out didn't fall in if they fell in yeah there would have been a fatality so uh, yeah this is this is what's left of uh, the ruins after that uh, it was about 6.8 6.9 magnitude earthquake and uh, it's pretty flat so somewhere around in here is that location of the baby's cot. looks like it this is the front entrance to the place up the stairs and boom there it is it came from the wrong direction baby's cot right there and amongst all that rubble that is where the baby's cot was found with the baby in it sound asleep the old cottage Salisbury cottage it ain't living anymore So we'll uh, yeah, turtle on. Our next stop will probably be down towards York. So stay tuned. Roy, Roy, happy days. I've made it to York. Cool little drive. I'm on the um, east side of the Avon River and I'm down here at a free camp. Great little free camp. Thank you, York. Um, probably get about six vans maybe in this um, middle area if you sort of tighten it all up. At the moment we've got four. And um, I'm not too sure of protocol whether you just park on the inside or um, you can um, inside and outside. So push comes to shove you, you can probably use the outside. It gets a bit tight. But no, it's a great little facility here for York. We're gonna, I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna go across the little swing bridge here over the Avon River and uh, into the town. But uh, I've got a little bit of information about swing bridges. <laughs> Stay tuned. Rorty, hi. Here we go, coming across this rickety old bridge. I wouldn't want to come across the original back in 1853 odd. It was, uh, this one's rickety enough, and this is the one that's been improved since the 1888 one, back in 1988. So we're looking at the Avon River, and that's it heading down towards Perth direction. I think it goes via Beverly. 
and then um, heading back that way where it's come from, um, northern. So we're going to look um, at its origination. I have gone past northern because uh, there wasn't any um, uh, free camps and things there, and I wanted to see the museum down here. So we'll call back through northern to get back onto the highway, and I think I'll head towards um, Tuja. But cool, crossing the old bridge here into terrific little parkland. We've got some good, um, good barbecue areas. I think there's some toilets over here as well. Pretty nice. That was the bridge over. We'll go and find out a little bit more in the town area. All right, so I've just walked into the sock factory here in um, York. Pretty nice store, man. They've got some pretty classy stuff. Um, couldn't believe they've got a, a merino denim out these days. I've lost touch of fashion and things. It feels really, really nice. It's good to see some uh, being kiwi. There's some possum and merino. So some really, really nice stuff. Um, at the back here, um, got some Uggs and socks. So I'll switch to the other lens and we'll go down and have a look at the sock factory. Which, considering it's 43 degrees yesterday, but it does get cold here. And this one would be a dead ringer from my wife, Judy. She'd love those rabbits. Anyway, down to the business end, these guys, it might get a bit noisy, but these guys actually um, make socks a lot for the Australian market, a lot for uh, sports teams, specialist socks. So here we go, the sock factory, proudly made in Australia. This looks like a lot of their wool blend type socks over here. And then out the back here we've got Dave, and he's manning the machines that are making the socks. 37 years I've been doing this. Look at that, the sock factory in York. There we go, the sock factory uh, in York. It's opposite the uh, town hall, I think it is. And um, yeah, if you want some nice product, very good. Good gift idea or something for yourself. It's easy to find. What a wicked building. Decent size too. As you come into York. Yeah, Grand Old Town, Grand Street. Beautiful old buildings. I remember coming through here a few years ago. But uh, it was only a whistle stop. Yeah, we shot through. I think the place was closed too, most of it. But, um, Definitely a nice little town to come and visit, and especially days like today. Man, it's gorgeous. So, uh, head down the street here, looking for that motor museum. Just had to have a hunt around and have a look at the rest of the town, see what it's got to offer. Well, there we go, across the road. Our motor museum. Go check it out. Oh, what a terrific little motor museum. All the old, some, some of them I haven't seen. The Beglia motorbikes. It's the oldest internal combustion engine in Australia. I don't know whether you can see it right there on the old bike. And then you got WA's oldest car. It's a, uh, an 1898 Benz single cylinder. Guy was still driving around the paddock, cutting chaff. <laughs> um, yeah, a bunch of race cars, little bambina looking things. One of the nicest. Um, Got the VW over here, 
down the bottom here. My camera's horrible, sorry. I'll see if I can get a better shot next time. But you got a like a, a takedown of the, the Volkswagen. Um, some more old timers, some Morrises, more Morrises. Standard Shelby Tura, Chevy Camaro. I mean, back in the days, probably back in, well, so, so that one there would be 77, 78. So yeah, you bought it new 78, probably around about 86, something like that, 86, 90. You probably wouldn't have got nothing for it. Can you imagine what it's worth now? So in here was the matchbox models. Lamps, emblems. I'm gonna say this is a very good rendition of the old Volkswagen cutaway 1954. It's really well done, showing you everything all cut. Show you how the internals of the Volkswagen all goes even down into the, the gearbox there. And the engine. Split window. Alrighty, I got the few things to do. <laughs> gotta get my Starlink down, gotta get the slide in, gotta get some water refilled over here, gotta get some gas. So, plenty to do today with uh, leaving York. Um, but hey, York's a, a beautiful little town. Um, some fantastic little heritage buildings there. Definitely um, great to take some photographs off and go and uh, view. Some good eats, some good pubs. Um, the um, was the car museum, that sock um, manufacturing place was pretty interesting and some nice product there. There's also a museum and an old jail and all that sort of stuff as well that you can come and visit here in York. Um, and it's pretty with the uh, the river and um, some swans and things like that around and lots of, um, lots of parrots and things flying around too. So great little spot, highly recommended for York. Just a shame um, you can only stay in this particular park for 24 hours. It'd be nice if it uh, sort of comes in line with some of the others now looking at 48 hours or even 72 hours. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's just gonna be a, a real relaxing day to day. I'll get all those supplies and then um, I'm gonna shoot back towards Northern, to, uh, take a uh, quick um, quick couple of shots around uh, Northern. Not, not much for me to sort of see and do around there, um, but must have a look at a, um, a big suspension bridge. We'll, we'll compare that suspension bridge over there with the one in Northern. <laughs> and uh, see how it goes. I understand the northern one is a big bridge. Um, and then I've got a nice little spot just before Touge to um, call into and uh, call that home for the night. So, and that's only, I don't know, I haven't looked at it on the map, but it's probably about 60 odd Ks maybe. I'll tell you when I get there, hopefully. Remind me. Anyway, uh, thanks to York. Lovely spot. Alrighty ho. I'm going across the, uh, the Avon. This is where they start the uh, the descent, which goes down the Swan River, down through to Two J. They stay the night, and then they continue on their way down to Perth. And they paddle kayaks. Well, they've got these little two-man boats that they scream down with. So this suspension bridge is uh, 117 meters long. It's the longest suspension bridge of its kind in Australia but don't quote me on that is uh, that was a, a little while ago on uh, Wikipedia and there's been some other bridges built since then so uh, I got it wrong uh, when I was in York I pointed in the direction the river was flowing the wrong way it's a bit hard to see what it flows it, it doesn't flow very fast but it comes from that way that's York heading down that way towards 2J that's the information center over there on the on the left and then you've got a fantastic uh, aboriginal cultural center on the right so we're about 100 k's from um, perth so it's not far it's nice for a day trip and things uh, northern was first settled in around about 1833 ah. and lastly northern was also um, is, where is it? There was a swan around somewhere. 
one swan, but it was also, it was lots of swans. Um, over a hundred years, they were introduced. Anyway, I hope you hear most of that with the amount of wind that's going on. I'm going to head into the historic area of uh, Northern and had a quick walk down the street. Well, that's my quick uh, snapshot of Northern. Definitely a, a nice place to come visit. Uh, if there's no um, RV friendly overnight free areas. Uh, there's daytime areas you can park, so there's plenty of RV parking, uh, caravan parking around the place. There's nice big parks about. Um, there's showers available, I think three bucks at the information center, I noticed. And yeah, there's plenty of toilets around, dump sites at the top as well. So uh, yeah, a bad little town, got quite a bit of history. Um, they have yeah, car races. Um, that balloon races, I think, um, coming up, hot air balloon, um, I think it's the inaugural one, I think they mentioned, don't quote me, but it's one of the only areas where you can get a lot of um, uh, balloon trips from. Well, found myself a cracking spot down here, Vivash, I think it's called. It's just a uh, little park spot here on the uh, banks of the Swan River, and um, not a lot of... Um, nice flat big spots I was lucky enough to grab that one there's another uh, one up the hill there where the toilet is that's close to the road uh, there's a couple down a bit further that way and uh, the direction that I came from I snuck down down through there so there's probably another one around the corner there anyway there's a, a road just the other side of the river it's uh, probably one of the older roads going into Northam and Tujé or no, it comes across the bridge just here. Um, and I think it takes you back to Northern. It's only about 15k, so it's actually not too far out of Northern. It's closer than I thought it was. And I think across the bridge over the other side there, there's a nice little church. Um, might do that tomorrow. Fingers crossed, I'll, I'll go into 2J, do a little bit in 2J, and then hopefully I'll snag this spot here or whatever. Fingers crossed on the way back. Just walking down the street of 2J and couldn't help but smell the beautiful smells coming from Butler Essence. Thanks, Jeff. So inside, oh, it smells, if there was smell of vision, um, all natural remedies. Over here, um, pain. Over here, breathing. Over here, internal gut health and um, other curator behind it and her kitchen nothing goes to waste so over here we have a lot of rubs salad dressings and things like that and a beauty kit um, side of things as well day creams available here at 2j online and I believe at the Fremantle Markets. I've got some on my joint at the moment on my elbow and we'll see whether she comes right. But good to see a bit of homegrown chemistry going on. Alrighty, into this pie shop. There's my little selections. I think I'm going to go for the jalapeno and brisket. I was keen on possibly I'll do the African lamb there was. But yeah, beautiful looking pies. We'll see how they go, eh? Some awesome selection of other things as well. All right, I hope this uh, comes out okay. Okay, so I'm at the, uh, the 2J Bakery, which was recommended by Rick, as I keep on telling everybody. Um, down at uh, Dudlet, Dud Rick down at uh, Dudekai. The bakery. And I've gone for this jalapeno thing. Uh, did I go to jalapeno? Yeah, it definitely looks like jalapenos on the top. Now I am a very funny pie eater. I don't munch into a pie. I'm a, uh, a pie deconstructor. Might need a drink of water after this. Oh, that's good. So the pastry on top is pretty good. It's um, not coming away as a whole lid though, which mm, might lose some points on that one. <laughs> 
come back to after I finish the lid. Alrighty, so the lid, pastry lid was not bad. Pastry was good, right amount of flake. Um, now I'm into the skin, what I call the skin, what's left on, on the top, well underneath the lid. So it uh, doesn't look too bad. Same as the lid though too, sometimes I like the, uh, the skin to come off in a um, fairly whole type fashion. Alright, so the skin side of things, that was very nice, right temperature, right, um, right sort of softness. Inside the pie itself, definitely living up to its name with the jalapeno. So there we have it, one of the last phases to go. It's holding together very, very, very well. Now, flavour of the pie, oh, that's very unique, it's very good. It's one of the nicest flavour I've had. Um, texture, consistency, spice is good too. I haven't had a lot of spicy pies. This one's definitely up there in the heat factor, so it's good. Well done. So, you walk around Meckering, and you're lucky enough, you might be able to find a place. It looks like a camera. Jeez. Right, hope you're happy, Judy. This will be about take four.